This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. If you're a brand these days, whether you're in the pet space or not, you know the value of having pets involved in your campaigns. Nothing brings a quick smile like cute images or a video of dogs and cats. My guest today, Mindy Dutta, is a photographer and marketer for brands. She advises brands on how to increase their impact by employing what she calls high impact photography that connects pet brands with dog people. Mindy is also a tireless advocate of animal rescue and has created relationships with some very inspiring rescues and shelters in Mexico, in Colombia, Puerto Rico, and right here in the U.S. We'll learn about them, their amazing stories, as well as big missions Mindy has been involved with to save animals. We're going to also get some behind-the-scenes stories of some of the brand campaigns she's done, so you'll get a peek behind the curtain. But we're going to take a short break from our sponsor, and when we return, you're going to meet Mindy. So grab that favorite beverage, get comfortable, and we'll be right back. How many of you have pets? My hand's raised. Now think about how lucky you are to have such a sweet little pet in your life, and that pet is lucky to have you too. But unfortunately, there are countless pets out there that don't have a home to call their own. However, Bob's from Skechers is trying to change that. So we developed Bob's for Dogs and Cats to help pets in need. With every purchase of adorable Bob's footwear or fun, stylish apparel, or even the cutest Bob's pet accessories, Skechers makes a donation to Petco Love to help save shelter pets. And with your for help, we've already saved the lives of over 1 million pets and raised over $7 million. So while you're getting style and comfort with features like Skechers Famous Memory Foam Cushioning, you're also helping to save an adorable pet in need and helping another lucky owner be connected with a future best friend and companion because happiness is having a loving pet by your side. Find Bob's at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, select pet co-locations, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to listening to Bark and Swagger on Pet Life Radio. I'm Jody Teich, your host. We're joined today by Mindy Dutka, a brand and pet portrait photographer and marketing strategist for brands on connecting them with dog people. Welcome, Mindy. Hi, Jody. Thanks for having me on your show. It is my pleasure. How are you today? Good, good. So I'm very excited to dive in because we all see, you know, more and more commercials with dogs in them or cats in them and print campaigns. I want to know a little bit more and maybe our listeners do too about what it's like. So first tell listeners what you do and then let's dive behind the scenes. Okay, that sounds great. Well, in a, a short version is really I combine my passion and my knowledge for photography, dogs, and storytelling. And I photograph for brands, pet parents, and animal advocates. So I'm really using the dog photos, you know, to tell the stories of brands, to capture priceless memories for pet parents and to create awareness and raise funds for animals. So there's a lot of different things actually that the power of photography extends to. Yeah, we love that because we are huge rescue advocates here at Bark and Swagger. Give my listeners a peek behind the curtain with maybe a couple of stories from brand shoots that you've done. What's it like? It's always fun. It's always interesting. There's kind of two different types of brand shoots often. Sometimes it's more of an on-location or a documentary type of photo shoot. For example, I, I photograph for um, a large veterinary emergency group, and they have emergency hospitals around the country. But basically, they're unique. Their story is, is that they don't separate pet parents from the pets. So they want to, you know, capture them in action. 
and what's actually happening. So in an instance like that, I go to the different vet clinics and basically spend a great deal of time just sort of photographing what comes through the doors as you know, it's happening. I actually one time was invited into the OR to photograph. They were doing a golden retriever had gotten into some uh, corn on the cob. And actually it was interesting because his, his, the, the dad brought him in saying he thought he got it out of his mouth and you know, that there, there was, it was fine, but he just wanted to be sure. Well, actually it was like the Volkswagen commercial where people just kept coming out of the Volkswagen the they <laughs> opened up his stomach and literally there was a bowl filled with just like there was I don't know eight nine small pieces of corn on the cob I don't even know how it fit in this dog's stomach so that was an interesting um experience for me to be able to watch that and, and, and that. <laughs> see that happening you know and they also do exotic animals. So one time, one of the uh, vet techs brought in her skunk to be photographed. And that was interesting. And I actually got bit by the skunk. <laughs> no. I was in the zone of my photographing and, and the skunk seemed so calm and tame that I reached out to like move his little foot to improve the shot, which I, that was not wise. And <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Today, when people keep skunks as pets, do they still have their scent? No, he was descented, had rabies. And actually, I, I don't even think you're allowed to keep a skunk as a pet. She had him um, as a special certification. She brought him into schools to educate. So I think that was a special um, classification. And that's why why she had the, the pet. So so that's more of a documentary yeah. type of photograph that, you know, I do. Um, and then other times brands, um, well, another pet brand, they'll send me their products. And then what I do is I do all the planning. I get the dog models. I choose the location. I work out a storyboard. And there's a lot of time behind the, the scenes talking to the brand. So I really can dive in and understand what their story is and what I want to, you know, how I want to tell that story in the photos. And one was a, a, a fun one. It was a, a supplement company. And just to make it a little unique, I mean, the, the idea is, you know, it's wellness and a bit of self-care for the dogs and cats. So I had, uh, actually, it was a golden retriever that was the model. And um, he wore my bathrobe. So, and I had a breakfast tray with the bowl and the <laughs> supplements on it. And we served him breakfast in bed. <laughs> Photograph that. I saw that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, that was a lot. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, really, really cute. Very cute. Mindy, where do you find your models for your shoots? Do you get local or could people listening, you know, possibly maybe in, in the Boston area where I know you're located, reach out through your site and put their puppy's hat in the ring, so to speak? Absolutely. Absolutely. So depending on what the shoot is and the type of dog and the size dog that I'm looking for, like your dog can be famous. And, you know, particularly depending on, you know, what I'm looking for, sometimes I'm looking for them to be able to hold a sit stay. Sometimes I'm looking for a big dog. So yes, by all means, I've always got my eye out for dog models. I also do something interesting and will work with shelters and use their dogs as Love models. It. I recently, I was in, I had a photo shoot uh, for a dog toy company. And I happened to have been in New Orleans. And so I connected up with the Louisiana SPCA, used their dogs in the photos. So it served many purposes. And I donated to them, um, you know, for the being able to use the dog. So that was helpful. The exposure for the dogs was helpful. The outing for the dogs to be able to do that was helpful. And the Louisiana SPCA promoted 
those photos. So the client does very well, you know, if they're interested in working with me on that program, helping dogs in need, they're getting a little bit extra exposure, you know, for what they're doing. So it really, it depends. Sometimes I, I'm that crazy lady in a dog park or I'm out somewhere and I see a dog and I'm like, by the way, your dog would be perfect for one of these shoots I'm doing. <laughs> I hand them a card. <laughs> uh, um, the proverbial discovered, you know, at the park or discovered, you know, wherever. Like right. Human models. Right. Yeah. It, it, exactly. So, yeah, I definitely, I have a model database and I'm always interested. Anybody, they can email me at hello at dogs. I we're going to go through all of that. I want to let people know at the end of this, you know, interview where they can find you. There are a couple of things to unpack with this. Number one, if you, we have people listening to Bark and Swagger that have their own brands. They are dog fashion designers or have other fashion oriented brands in the pet space. And and Mindy could be a great resource for you to have amazing photos of your, your products. And also, if you have a dog that you want to, that isn't, you know, that is in the area, in the Boston area, that you think would be a great dog model, at the end of the segment, we're going to give you all the contact information for Mindy. So this could be a lot of fun across the board. So Mindy, you're also a really a tireless advocate of animal rescue and a supporter of rescues um, all over the place, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Central America. You share their stories, you help fundraise for them, you do photography for them. Tell us a little bit about some of them. It's been really, I don't know, heartwarming, eye-opening, sad, happy uh, to do this. But well, just to backtrack my tagline of my business, because every dog has a tail, T-A-L-E. And I really, you know, believe every dog has many tails. Um, and then they have the tails they bring to us for being in our lives. But I felt that photography, you know, could really be helpful to rescues, again, for creating awareness and, and raising money. And even dogs in shelters, I often say a good photograph can be the difference between life and death for a dog in, in a shelter. True. It really can. But I also have a passion for travel. So it was interesting to me to sort of, you know, marry the travel and get to know about different rescues around the world. And it all the traveling part started, I volunteered to um, photograph a spay neuter clinic in um, Mexico, in, in Playa del Carmen. And it was a big five day event. I probably photographed thousands of dogs and cats. And it was just really like an eye opener. And it was in so interesting. And I got to meet a lot of independent rescue organizations, really a vibrant rescue community. So it was, it's sort of like the, the best and the worst. There's horrible stories about the mistreatment and the, the terrible things that happen to the animals. But then there's these people that like tirelessly work to rescue them and care for them. And they really do such amazing work. So I got to know um, a lot of these different rescues. And that was about six years ago, I think that I started doing that. And I've come to know the group of rescues in Mexico. And I've also on the board of a foundation called the Global United Foundation. So in addition to the work, I'm going to circle back to the Mexico. But in addition to that, I traveled to Puerto Rico shortly after Hurricane Maria, again, to, to document and create awareness of what was happening because there were no spay new cl neuter clinics. It was really, really bad with the overpopulation. And we were able to raise some money and have the photos, which really, you know, you can tell people, but it's not the same thing as seeing photos and, and understanding what's Absolutely. happening. Sure. Tells a picture speaks a thousand words, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to take a short break from our sponsor, but don't go away because when we return, we're going to learn about a pizza loving Rhodesian Ridgeback named Sal. You heard that right. And a dog remembered by her loving family. 
through Mindy's photos. So refresh that beverage, get cozy, and we'll be right back. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. Welcome back. If you've just joined, you're listening to Bark and Swagger on Pet Life Radio, and I am Jody Teich, your host. We're here today with Mindy Dutka, brand and pet portrait photographer and seeking future dog models photographer whose rescue work has inspired her to go to Mexico, Puerto Rico, Colombia, and beyond. I read on your site, Mindy, that you took a tour in 2019 of rescues in Mexico. What was that trip like? So that trip, all serendipitously, things sort of converged in Mexico for me. I was also involved in planning a retreat for dog photographers. It was another hat of a different life. I had an event planning company. But I got to, as I mentioned, I got to know these rescues and I did um, basically like a behind the scenes get to know. I did it actually two years in a row. I think it was 2018 and 2019. And I took a group of international dog photographers. I think there might've been eight of us literally from all over the world. Some of them were from New Zealand, California. Uh, I think someone was from England. And we went to these rescues. One was actually deep in the jungle. And um, I, I had somebody bring us in. It wasn't the type of thing where you could take a taxi and say, <laughs> <laughs> drop us off. But it was the man had built like um, its own little protected shelter. And he rescues the really like down and out, you know, it seems they find him. Um, so we were there, we photographed there. And we also went to a rescue called SOS El Arca, which I'm going to talk a little bit about that in present day as well. And they are a, more of an actual shelter that people leave the dogs all the time. So they're always getting dogs there and cats there. People just kind of leave them in front of the shelter, but they do remarkable work. And the idea was bringing these photographers there was that we donated the photographs and the videos for them to use for awareness. But these people lived in my heart and, and seeing all these dogs. And the other thing that I was so taken by was every dog that I met, whatever their story was, was friendly. Like they were so sweet and loving and wagging their tail and eating out of my hand. And it just was a reminder of how amazing dogs are. Even after terrible things, they still wanted to trust and love. But the whole biggest crux of the problem is overpopulation, you know, is where you wind up with the need for all of these people to take care of these animals. So SOS Alarca um, has committed to doing um, three years of monthly spay neuter clinics. Um, they started last year. They did eight clinics and were able to spay neuter 3,500 animals. I'm going down there in March. And through Global United Foundation, which is a 501c3 US-based nonprofit, so all tax deductible donations, we are helping to support this campaign because it's truly the only way to eradicate the overpopulation. And they're doing about 400 dogs per clinic. And I'm really excited about it. So, you know, um, we can talk about that too, but people, if they can donate, if you can't donate any amount, 
is helpful. Yeah, there, there's going to be a link underneath this episode on the Bark and Swagger page of the Pet Life Radio site where you can donate to Global United if you like. There will also be a couple of photographs on the Bark and Swagger page so you get to see Mindy, who you're listening to. And maybe, you know, Mindy will give us a couple of pictures of her adventures. So you'll get to see all of that as well. It's a tough situation, you know, it's overpopulation and having to spay and neuter all these dogs is uh, is arduous, expensive, and not good for the animals. It's not good to spay and neuter, especially young, but we really don't have a whole lot of options trying to solve this problem when it comes to stray animals. So it's a tough situation. It is tough. I want to talk about some fun stories. Yes. From dogs I meet. And let's introduce my listeners to your brand, Dogs I Meet, because it truly is that. You share with your audience, your tribe, the dogs that you meet on your adventures and in your life. So tell us a couple of your favorite stories. Well, I'm going to tell you one. I'm going to tell you a couple, but one that's so cool because you just never know where a story is going to go. And I'll, I'll try to make it quick. But I was in Cartagena photographing for a shelter um, that I did some work with and raised some money for and kept in touch with the owner of the woman who ran the shelter. And I did a, put a story up on my website. And probably about a month ago, six weeks ago, um, at like 1030 at night, I received an email saying, please help. Can you rescue a dog in St. Andrew's Square in Cartagena? And I was like, hmm. And then I said, uh, must be Google. <laughs> they must have found me because these people want to help a dog that they've come across. And the long and short story was, was that actually the, the people that reached out to me, because that's, that's what happened, were from traveling in Columbia from New Jersey. And I let them know who I was. And the woman who owned the ran the dog shelter was in France because she wasn't from Colombia. I was able to connect everybody up through, you know, a lot of WhatsApping and, and, and messaging and so forth and back and forth. The woman in France was able to get us somebody who was in Cartagena, who was able to come out and rescue the dog. The dog is rescued. The dog has been vetted. It's healing beautifully. It's currently in Cartagena. We are in the process of getting its paperwork done. It's going to be flown to JFK. Uh, Rescue uh, Stray from the Heart has agreed to sponsor him and help him find a home. And uh, so I kind of love that story. <laughs> I love that story too. Yeah. I love Stray from the Heart. And the power of technology today and what we can do. And that is such a beautiful example of saving a life through that. So that's amazing, Mindy. Good on you. I want to hear also about the pizza loving dog. <laughs> ah, that must be Sal. So that's Sal. Yes. Sal is one of my favorites. His, I think Sal was about nine or 10 months old. He's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. His mom hired me for a photo shoot and we did an urban shoot in Boston and he was a rock star model. And there happens to be, I think there's a couple of stores called Sal's Pizzeria. And his <laughs> mom was like, oh my God, you, you have to, we have to go to Sal's Pizzeria and you have to get a photo of, of, of Sal underneath the Sal's Pizzeria sign. And I was like, sure. So we did. And she told me like such a funny story. Apparently Sal loves pizza <laughs> and, and then he mugs people he was she had him in the park one time and a man I guess was doing like a picnic in the park with a box of pizza and Sal got a whiff and ran after him and <laughs> stole his pizza <laughs> My dogs love pizza too. So I'm sure Sal is not alone, right. but he's a big boy. So when he mobs someone for their 
Uh, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And speaking of dog models, I had um, so some several years passed and I was doing a photo shoot for a, a dog, uh, dog food and dog treat company. And I reached out because I thought Sal would be perfect. And Sal and his mom um, modeled for that shoot. Now they're featured on the uh, brands, which I my zone blue, which is a great Great dog treat for anybody. Now, Sal is on their website. And um, so that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Then the story continued. That's okay. Um, Sal's mom contacted me a few months later with some exciting news that she was pregnant. And she wanted to announce that Sal was going to be a big brother. So <laughs> we actually did a photo shoot. That's the first time I met her husband. And we did a photo shoot. It was adorable. She brought a few props and Sal had a sign around his neck, you know, big brother. And we had some baby shoes. It was a really one really cute shot I did because I have sort of a signature shot where I just do the people's feet and bottoms of their legs and, and the dog by there. And that's a great shot because a lot of times people don't want to be in a photograph or if they're going to put a photograph up big on their wall, they don't necessarily want to see themselves, but it's important to capture that connection. And yes. a, a shot like that does a great job at that. It's a fun shot. It's a, it's a good viewpoint. You see the connection, but you don't have to look at your face live on the wall. <laughs> but I love that idea of, you know, a shoot around a family expecting and the dog, becoming a big brother or sister. What a great idea. Everybody listening, that could be something fun in your family if it makes sense. So there was another dog that I came across from your stories on your site uh, named Sophie that was quite moving and poignant. Tell us about that. Well, so Sophie's um, mom had contacted me that Sophie was getting older and she wanted to do a photo shoot. And um, so I actually went to her house because Sophie wasn't able to venture out that far. And um, we did a photo shoot and um, captured a lot of great photos. And, you know, her mom purchased, you know, one of the packages and had several of the different photos. And when I say photos too, I, I want to stress that for the private shoots that I do, you know, everyone's got an iPhone and everybody's got the digital photos, but nobody really takes the time to, you know, actually have a piece of art, um, whether it be a large canvas or a framed piece or an acrylic block, you know, so that's one of the things that I do is make sure that those photos taken wind up as a permanent priceless memory that's not like a small little picture. That's a digital that never comes off of anybody's phone. And sadly, Sophie, you know, she she passed a short, she, maybe a few months after the, the photo shoot. And her mom got back to me and told me how important that those photos were. And not only were they priceless memories, but she said that they really helped her process her grief by being able to have those photos. That's another thing about the value of professional photos, of really, you know, being able to capture the essence of the dog, because I'm trained to do that. I spend lots of, you know, I'm constantly, you know, working on my craft. I have equipment that most people don't have. I've produced pieces of actual art from them, you know, and so it really was meaningful to her and really helped her process her grief. And I actually, like a year or two later, she got another dog and she didn't wait this time until the dog was old. She called me right away and said, I got Squirt. You got to meet Squirt. You have to do a photo shoot for Squirt. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. I, You know, I was going to say that too, Mindy, that, you know, we take pictures of our animals all the time with our iPhones or, you know, whatever our handheld devices are. And, um, and that's fun and wonderful and definitely our memories. But there is nothing like having photographs, whether it's a 
just your beloved pets or you and your pets done professionally like art. I absolutely agree with you. It puts a whole different feeling and spin on it. And I really encourage people to consider that, especially now after hearing about Sophie's mom and how it was so important in processing her grief about losing her dog. So Yeah. So, and we're going to have a couple of examples of Mindy's work on the Bark and Swagger page for you to see for yourself the kind of work that she does. So where can people find you, whether they want to donate to Global United, whether they want to book you, if they're a brand, if they're a private, you know, client, or learn more about what you do? So my website is dogseyemeet.com. My email is mindy at dogseyemeet.com. My Instagram is at dogseyemeet.com. And also my phone number, you can connect me, is is on my website. So um, take take a look at that. If you're a LinkedIn person, I'm under my name, Mindy Dutka. Um, and, you know, please, and for brands, I offer a complimentary, I call it a discovery call, so that we can talk and see if we're a good fit for one another. And um, so that's always available. And, you know, pa- parents also the same thing. There's a consultation call. A lot goes into before and Global United Foundation. I know you're going to put up, um, you can find Global United Foundation. I think it's org. And then there's also a donor box page where you'll put the link on there if you want to send a donation. And you can be on the lookout. I'm going to be starting a robust campaign. So on my Instagram and Facebook, I'll be posting. And if you would be so kind to, you know, just sort of share those posts, that would be appreciated as well. Perfect. Mindy, thank you so much for being with us today, sharing your gifts. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a real pleasure. I'm so glad. And thank you all for listening. Um, We couldn't be without you. So I appreciate you. Thanks to our producer, Mark Winter. Mark, you make us sound so good and we love you for it. My passion is living stylishly, animal rescue, and natural health. So tune in next time to discover the designers, home decor, and rescue stories I love. So until next time, when fierce fashion calls, Bark and Swagger. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.